so welcome everybody. Um, so some uh, faces I've seen before, some new faces. Really excited to be working with all of you um, on this great program. Um, this meeting is the um, kickoff, wordy kickoff for the Small Business Assistance Partnership Grant Program. Um, oh, I got to turn off that train. Right, that's distracting. Um, and we are here to cover um, just the basics of getting onboarded um, as a grantee, getting your contracts in place, some of the requirements around pay payments and all that kind of logistical details. You are also one of the first cohorts of, of awardees to go through our new deed grants management system, um, which we're very, very excited about. We think it's going to streamline a lot of the mechanics of participating in the state grant program. And so uh, we're joined by Anna Rodell, who's the product owner for Deed for that system, and she will be providing a demo later on for us. So uh, my name is Brandon Toner. Um, I lead the community partnerships team within the Office of Small Business and Innovation. The so Office of Small Business and Innovation will hear some opening remarks from Neela Margar, our executive director, to kind of give you an overview of what that team is. It's a relatively new configuration within Deed focused on small business. Um, before that, I just want to quickly go over the agenda. We'll do welcome and introductions. We'll briefly cover the, the overall program objectives, just to, to level set. Um, we'll walk through how to execute a grant agreement, payments reporting and monitoring, some notes on coordination and outreach and connection to all the other uh, folks in this in this network of providers. And then uh, Anna Rodell will walk through us, uh, uh, walk through a demo for us on how to complete the next step and getting onboarded. It's what we call the grant agreement contracting worksheet. That will be through the system. You'll learn more about that. Um, and you're receiving some emails after this uh, meeting on how to get through that system. And then we'll save some time at the end, hopefully about 10 minutes uh, for any uh, questions or answers. If you have questions throughout this, feel free to drop them in the chat. Um, and we have colleagues uh, here that will help you answer uh, those questions as, as we get through this. And then we'll address uh, those questions if we need to at the end as well. Uh, so that, Nadia, if you can help me mute uh, some folks. Uh, somebody's uh, putting uh, sugar in their coffee, it sounds like. Um, I want to do some introductions. So, um, uh, we have Neela Mogard, the Executive Director for Office of Small Business and Innovation. She'll uh, uh, offer some opening remarks summarizing what that team is about, but I also want to introduce you, if you can give a wave, um, Nadia and Julia. Um, for those who have participated in the past, it was just me. It was lonely old me helping you out get through this process. We, we did have recognized the importance of this program, expanded the funding, and we are resourcing it to make sure that we you can be successful um, in your project. So Nadia and Julia, um, Nadia is going to be taking the lead on um, being kind of your lead liaison at Deed throughout this program, and Julia will be helping out uh, Nadia throughout that process. So uh, we hope faster payment process, questions being answered faster, um, all sorts of great support, technical assistance. Um, Nadia and Julie will be providing your teams and, and mine, uh, myself as well um, to be successful. So really excited about that. Um, and you'll definitely get to know them uh, uh, more uh, throughout um, this, this program. Um, and then Anna, it's somewhere you'll meet her later. I can't see, there's so many uh, boxes in front of me, I can't see her face. But Anna Rodell is our product owner for the Deed Grants Management System, and she's been a great asset to the team in helping set up the system and helping people get through it. So really appreciate uh, the work there. You'll get to meet her later. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Neela Mogard so for some welcoming remarks before we get into the nitty gritty details of the program itself. Hello, everyone. Uh, it's great to join you here today. I just want to thank uh, Brandon and his team internally. Uh, though we've been able to hire, it's still a pretty lean team to do what uh, their team does. And of course, thanks to all of you for your interest and your partnership uh, with this grant and with DEED. Um, as Brandon shared, uh, we have implemented a lot of new things this fiscal year for this biennium, this new software um, with record amounts of requests for funding. We also uh, were very purposeful in, in engaging inside and outside reviewers while standing up uh, numerous programs from a historic legislative session. I do really feel good though about a thought, our thoughtful approach that we took this um, session. 
obviously scores were primary and uh, were, were taken very seriously, but we also looked at other factors. One, the type of businesses um, or type of business that you're serving regarding our pillars, which Brandon will go into further, the equity, the vibrancy, innovation, and also geography uh, to make sure that we had the support across the state. Our office um, is working together and with you, all of our partners, to really better serve small businesses. We have our community partnerships team, our small business assistance team, our SBDC office, and our Launch Minnesota office. When we look at those four offices that are now under this, this new office of small business and innovation, there's really a common threads, and that is increasing connectivity, increasing access to capital, and increasing the capacity and know-how for businesses to be successful. We have a lot of great, uh, the teams are great, efforts are great, we have many different grant programming, but what we're really purposeful in trying to do and need your help and assistance to do this too, is to continue to break down the silos and really leverage the strengths of our individual programs and our people, because really at the, what we're all trying to do, we have that common mission is to better serve our entrepreneurs, our small businesses and our startups to be successful. That's our, that's our um, together, our kind of a collective impact and common vision. Um, I, I'm confident that working together, our impacts will be greater yeah, locally and statewide. And I also want to share that our office is here, obviously, to serve our small businesses, but also to support you to be successful, because when you're successful, we are all going to be successful. So I encourage you to reach out to some of our shared resources to help increase your reach with your clients and, and capacity of your organization. We have a statewide calendar that you are free to use that's, that we pay for. You can put it on your website like Beta does, Forge North does, E1 Collaborative does. We have a monthly small business call now uh, focusing on different uh, topic areas that are important to our small businesses. Um, we have recently formed a partnership, a greater partnership with the Office of Secretary of State. So every business now that is renewing or applying to be a new business uh, is receiving a, a link of information and your organization as one of our grantee partners will be listed in that tableau. So they'll be able to search you based on the services you provide and your geographic location. We also have uh, coming in January some new tools for our guidebook and how to start a business, uh, an ebook opportunity, and other ways. And those are just to name a few. And if there are things that we as a state can do um, to better help support you and your efforts, please reach out to us. We that really is a priority for us. You know, we know entrepreneurship is is uh, sometimes a lonely journey. Journey uh, um, as we talk to our businesses, um, but they need to know that our state and their community is here to support them. So DEED, our office is really relying on all of you to help act on our behalf and pr provide that critical technical assistance, subject matter expertise, education for our small businesses to be successful. We know that small businesses uh, make a big impact and, and we need your partnership to keep Minnesota's economy strong and vibrant. Thank you for your time, and I will pass this back to Brandon. Awesome. Thanks, Neil. I appreciate that overall view there. Um, so now we want to dive into the, the, the nitty gritty, the specifics of this program. But before we, we dive into the mechanics of getting onboarded, I just want to cover once again the objectives of this specific program as distinct from, from other programs. And this is really uh, to support the startup growth and success of Minnesota's entrepreneurs and small business owners through that technical assistance. A number of partners at this table also provide other resources such as lending capital and, and so on and so forth. Um, but this is really about that 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 direct services to those entrepreneurs. And one of the things that we um, did this time around is we wanted to put some parameters, uh, some aspirations around what we call these three themes or three priority themes so that you that with the idea that organizations would see themselves in one, at least one of these buckets, if not multiple of these buckets, and really hone in our strategies to deliver that impact. And those three themes are equity, innovation, and vibrancy. Um, no doubt, every, 
everybody's going to have a little piece of, of all that, but some organizations, some projects are going to be focused on one um, or the other. Um, and what we wanted to do is make sure that we're responsive to the demand for funds along these lines. And so it, when we hear we, you know, we get you know, millions in requests for to focus on equity, we want to make sure that we're investing in equity at that at the appropriate level that reflects that that demand. Same thing with the innovation and vibrancy. So um, so yeah, just wanted to cover cover the objectives uh, of overall objectives of the program. Um, and then uh, just want to quickly recap a timeline of where we're at. I will admit we're a little behind. Uh, we were anticipated uh, awards in October. Here we are in December or, or well, November, um, but finalizing those in December. Um, and so it's a, it's been a long journey, and it's and I appreciate everybody's patience on this as we um, onboard to this new grants management system, as we're onboarding historic investments uh, across uh, the field um, in this space. And so here we are. Um, we anticipate at this point projects starting uh, January. We may be able to get some contracts executed even before then. We'll see. Um, but uh, generally plan around um, that January timeline. And then um, we're still going to hold to the October 2025 uh, project end of performance period. Uh, we'll get into the details later about contracts, but know that you will have options to extend later down the line if if we need to, but we'll we'll cover that later. So a couple of nitty gritty uh, details here, getting started. First thing I want to cover, very important, don't start your project, don't incur expenses that you expect to get reimbursed for until your contract is executed. We are not allowed to reimburse you for anything until that contract is executed. Um, uh, another thing, too, if you haven't done already, uh, ready, is you're going to have to register with the vendor estate. Some of you have already been registered. It's also good just to check and make sure your registration is up to date in case you've moved headquarters or banking information has changed, things like that. But you will need to register as a vendor with the state so that we can get through our accounting system um, and that you can you can get paid. Um, the other thing, too, is a uh, helping us complete the risk assessment and the UI account release. These are some uh, things that we need to get a, uh, get done before um, the contract is executed. So you're going to be getting some emails from Nadia, if you haven't already, um, about follow-up. So just be really responsive and get back get that back in, uh, information back to Nadia so we can get that done and out of the way so it doesn't lead to any delays down the line. And then this is the important step for today. This is what I really want to highlight is that everybody's going to, uh, through the new grants management system, you're going to need to confirm or revise um, uh, details of your work plan in the grants management system. So uh, this includes your budget, work plan performance measures, and your partnerships. Now, one thing I want to cover, we'll get into the details later, is that even if you receive the full amount, you're still going to need to reconfirm the details of your budget. So you will have an opportunity if, if, uh, to make some revisions if you if you need to make some revisions, but otherwise you still have to reconfirm those details and we need to confirm those on our end. Um, so it's a little extra. It, it might feel like a little bit of double work, but it's fine. It's a uh, it, it you'll be able to get through it. It's, it's pretty straightforward. Um, and we'll talk about revisions in a bit um, if you need to make revisions. And then um, that system will route um, will um, uh, route a contract for approval and eventually you'll be handed a grant agreement that is approved by us and signable by you. And then we'll route that on our end and you will receive an executed grant agreement. And then um, and then once you receive that fully executed grant agreement, that's our thumbs up for you to get going. Um, and you can start incurring eligible expenses, start collecting performance metrics and so on and so forth. And we can start processing reimbursements. We'll talk about the reimbursement process in a bit. So I wanna cover revisions. Not everybody, we, one of our objectives of this program is try to fund as many organizations as possible as a, at 100% of their request. Um, we also put in um, some kind of benchmarking so people know kind of where roughly they should be requesting. Um, and, uh, you know, we always knew that we were going to fall short of that goal, but we were able to award almost 50% of the requests at 100%, um, but um, and the vast majority of 90% of their requests. We have 70 applicants, 28 million in requests. There's always way more great proposals than we have funding for. And so um, several factors impacted the final award amount. We look at this in a comprehensive view, not just um, 
uh, you know, your individual proposal. We're looking at geographic and demographic equity considerations, making sure that we're serving every corner of the state, that anybody in the state, wherever they're at, has access to a partner that's going to work with them. Um, we also take a look at individual uh, requests, smaller, more modest requests. We tried to fund at 100% or close to it. Larger requests we funded at below 100%. And then we're also looking at the overall comprehensive system wide objectives. We're looking at special appropriations. We're looking at other sources of funding, um, Launch Minnesota, all, how all this fits in and making sure that we're resourcing the system wide across multiple different programs at the appropriate level to maximize impact. Um, so if you have specific questions of like, well, why why was my award this or why was my award that? We're happy to take those questions. We're happy to walk through that, but just wanted to give you an overview of why that is, uh, why your award might might not be 100% um, of, of your request. I want to emphasize that you have the flexibility. We didn't make any specific like line item vetoes in your project plan. You have the flexibility to prioritize your work plan and budget revisions on those activities that will maximize impact on meeting program objectives. Um, and so, um, you know, sharpen your pencils and, you know, um, and revise your plans accordingly. Um, another thing I want to note here is that um, this is biennium funding. So there's year one, year two funding. State fiscal year 2024 funds are not, uh, or I'm sorry, state fiscal year 2025 funds are not available in fiscal year 24. What that means is no more than 50% of your award is available through June 30, 2024. I don't think that there will be a problem considering we're about six months into 2024. Um, so you can um, backload, essentially, you can backload your budget into 25 with 24 funds, but you can't front load 25 funds into 24. So that's just an important detail when you're filling out that grant contract. Look at your award amount and make sure no more than 50% of that uh, award amount is in that first grant year that will be through June 30, 2024. So, and Brandon, I have a question in the chat uh, yeah. regarding this um, yeah. from Hannah. Uh, Hannah asks, what kind of budget updates will be allowable due to timeline shifts? Uh, we anticipate staffing cost changes because of this timing. So, Hannah, if you'd like to get more into that question, or Brandon, if you have any thoughts on that. Yeah, just, just a couple. I mean, obviously, if. Um, the the key thing we're looking at is is the activities and the deliverables related to those activities. If you need to shift budgets given timelines to still hit those metrics, by all means, you have that flexibility. What we don't want to see is we can't if if you receive less than you requested, you're fully empowered to say, well, we're not going to deliver on this or that because you know you just don't have the resources or or, or time. What we what we can't see is that uh, adding new things. Right, it's you have to start. The starting point is your existing plan and your deliverables. And if we're saying we're only going to fund you at fifty percent, we don't expect you to deliver a hundred percent on ha half the funds. So you would right size and focus your your activities, your act your activities and performance uh, projected outcomes accordingly. And you have flexibility to shift um, however you see fit, as long as it falls within those existing um, budget line items in your original plan. Right. So can't make up a new plan, but you have to, but you can revise your existing plan. So, um, Thank you. great. And then um, let's talk about payments. If you have like bigger questions, we can like save it towards the end. But let's talk about payments real quick. Um, so payments operate on a reimbursement basis. Um, one thing to note is that you can incur eligible expenses, and you may uh, you may submit payment requests. Uh, uh, I'm not sure what I was trying to say here, but you can incur <laughs> eligible expenses and then you'll submit those requests through the grants management system. Um, incurred obligations, what we're looking at is the date you incurred that obligation can be can be paid by you before or after a fulfilled payment request. So for example, if you're working with a contractor, right, and they're doing some consulting with you, maybe they're translating some materials or or, or something. Right, you can incur that obligation. They can invoice you. You can send us a payment request to pay out that invoice. We will pay that out, and then you can pay that um, that contract. You don't have to pay that contract out first. What we care about is when you incurred that obligation. So, if it's easier from the perspective of your accounting system to just pay 
pay your expenses and they get reimbursed um, by us after that works for us if it if it's better for you for cash flow purposes to get reimbursed for those incurred obligations first then you pay out your obligations that also works for us you have some flexibility there the key thing that we're looking at is um, when you incur those obligations we consider that a reimbursement we cannot advance funds so if you have um you know costs that are coming up on the horizon and you want uh, uh, to have money in the account to pay for that we don't advance funds we only operate on a reimbursement basis so um and if you have follow-up questions and i mean nadia and julia will be there uh full step of the way to help you out through all that process and make sure that um it works out um for you well um requests can be submitted monthly or quarterly um it depends on your cash flow needs and accounting systems what works best some folks prefer quarterly because they have more time to put reports together some folks are, are prefer monthly for cash flow purposes um um uh, up to you we're, we're willing to be flexible on that um you can submit those monthly or quarterly um one thing to note though is that payments cannot be made on grants with past due progress reports so it and progress reports are going to be due on a quarterly basis so for overall program um, alignment it may make sense for you to just submit those quarterly with your with your progress reports we'll work with you on what's going to work best for your organization you you have some flexibility there but one of the things that we will be tracking is are your progress reports in if there's a late progress report, we have to hold payment. We're required to hold payment on that. So that's one of the things that we'll be tracking. Um, and then um, progress reports will be submitted within 30 days of the end of the quarter. We'll, we got a whole section on report later, uh, actually in the next slide. And we'll, we'll make sure you have that schedule. The schedule's on the right. Once again, we'll send this all out to you. Um, the first report, um, since we're kind of in the middle of a quarter, the fr that first report will be due um, April 30th, 2024. Um, and you, yes, you can submit payment requests before then. Obviously, you're going to be doing work. We want you to be doing work. We want you to be delivering impact for businesses. Um, and your first report will be due 4 30th, 2024. And then after that, we will be tracking our reports in. If not, we have to hold payment. We'll send out reminders and all that. So, um, and then the quarters are set on a fiscal year basis. So just so you know how how we're thinking about it. OK, and then, yeah, the reporting will happen through the grants management system. Um, we're still configuring the details of that. So more information to come on that, more training, more technical support on, on that. A couple notes on reporting here is that um, if you recall in the RFP, one of the things that we want to encourage um, participants in this program to do is utilize a customer relation management software or case management software um, to be able to create customizable reports. Um, we're not going to mandate that you use a specific software. We're not even gonna mandate you use software, um, but we just encourage that, you know, one of the principles of this program and, and just all government programs is you should know who your clients are and you should be able to report on who your clients are and what services they're receiving and if there are any reportable uh, milestones outcomes to be able to summarize that and share that with us um, so we're trying to beef that up we're also trying to take a comprehensive system-wide approach on this so that we can say how many businesses did we serve and we can look at multiple different programs and say this is how many businesses we served over this time period regardless of source of funding regardless of program so we appreciate your, your work on this um, and um, joining us in this journey to, to, to figure this out. Um, quarterly progress reporting will be submitted through the D grants management system. Once again, more details to come. And then we will also ask for some additional information on annual final reports, such as things that would be like client level details that we would like to see summaries of, such as like demographics, like, you know, how many, uh, you know, how many folks in this particular region or this particular race or ethnicity or language group did you serve so that we can we can share that information up and celebrate uh, those great successes. Um, so within each of your individual programs, you may have um, you may have planned around certain program specific outputs and outcomes that are specific to your program. And we recognize that each program is going to be a little bit different. You're going to be doing different activities, different seeking different outcomes. We respect that. Um, but we, what we want to do is we want to have 
minimum common measures across all the different projects at minimum. Now, you may not be running a job creation program, right? You may not be like seeking to to increase in you know capital investment and expand a business or something like that. Maybe it's a vibrancy focused project and you're increasing you know new business starts or something like that or capital access, whatever that is. Um, but we want you in your grant contracting worksheet to at least um, have these minimum common common measures that you will tell us what you expect to deliver on for those outputs and outcomes. And that's hours of direct service, unique clients served for outputs, um, and then outcomes, capital access, jobs retained, jobs created, new business starts. Regardless of whether or not your specific program is maybe focused on, on especially as it relates to outcomes, I think outputs are pretty, pretty standard, but as it relates to outcomes, just include that as part of your plan. Um, and um, if that number is zero, if you're not really running a, a capital access program, that is totally fine. We just want to be able to summarize all these different programs across the board um, and say, you know, this is these are the metrics for the for the overall program, this specific program and for other programs such as Launch Minnesota and others. So this is a minimum common measures and please include this in your revised um grant contracting worksheet if you haven't included them already you are welcome to also include all the other measures that you have included in your projects that is totally fine we want you to track those as well we want to celebrate those we want to be able to summarize those as well um so yeah your project may include additional measures specific to your project great so and brandon we have yep. another question from lisa when will the first annual report be due uh, great question. So um, it'll be due um, after June 30, 2024. So yes, that annual report is only six months, but we want to make sure we have a, a proper cadence for the reporting. So that annual report will be due after 6-30-2024. So we might uh, allow 60 days uh, to summarize that. We'll work with you on what a timeline makes sense to be able to summarize all that data. But, um, you know, between 30 and 60 days after that time period so that we can report um, on that. Thank you. Uh, da, 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 monitoring. OK, so a couple of notes on monitoring. So we are required to do monitoring visits with you at least once per year. And what is a monitoring visit? Um, you're going to get to know Nadia. You're going to get to know Julia. I may even join a few. Um, and it's really just to get to know you and your team and see how we can be helpful. Just just take, you know, a half hour to an hour to dive in deep, review and ensure progress against the grants goals, address any problems, request extensions, budget adjustments, um, tell us some wins that we can share back uh, uh, across the state and to our senior leaders. Um, it is not an audit. It is uh, the objective being we're here to support your success, and it's just a chance to just set aside some time and dive deep. Um, so really looking forward to those. Uh, they may be virtual or in person as time and travel and schedules allow or your preference allows. Um, and yeah, once again, not an audit. So uh, these are pretty usually pretty fun meetings where we get into the details. We will cover like basic like controls and accounting practices and things like that just make sure you're well aligned um, but you've already demonstrated obviously in your your uh, proposals that you know you're all a bunch of great organizations you know how to manage these grants so um so now i want to transition so that that was a lot of like the mechanics of getting onboarded the mechanics of getting paid and uh, all those kind of things um, now i want to talk about more of like the system-wide approach one of the things that we we don't want to do is just hand you a grant contract and say, good luck, talk to you in six months, let us know how you're doing. Like we want to make sure that you feel supported, that you have access to good information, that you have access to us, that you have access to each other, that you have access to other programs and resources across the state. And that also that our businesses are connected to those resources as well. Um, and so we, we almost think of this as like community building here. Right. So one of the things that um, you've been asked to do, and if you haven't done so, this is a reminder to do it, is please complete um, our form to inform our small business partners directory. Right. So we have a dynamic directory where we use this all the time where uh, a member of the public can go, I need I need help. I'm a business owner. I need help with my business. I don't even know where to start. And they can go to this directory 
and they could say, I need, I'm looking for financing capital. I'm looking for class classroom uh, training, or I'm looking for services in this particular language um, group or services within this particular region. And they can take that big old long list. We're going to have 41 plus 8 plus 17. We're going to have like almost 60 partners uh, for them to navigate through. Um, and they could narrow that list down and go, yeah, this sounds like a pretty good organization. I'm going to reach out to them and, and get a referral here. Um, so that's a really important piece. We use that all the time. Um, it's a surprise sleeper hit for us. Um, and people really, really appreciate that. And once again, Neela talked about this earlier. This is also going to be linked with the Secretary of State. Hundreds of thousands of businesses uh, renew their registration every year with the Secretary of State. And so you know, that's going to raise the profile of your organization as out there supporting these businesses. So we're really excited about that. Also slightly terrifying. Um, that's a lot of people, um, but we hope that uh, it improves that the awareness of all the great work that you are all doing and the services um, that are that are available out there. We're also going to start. Um, we piloted this with our special appropriation grantees. Um, we're going to be and continue with you all. Um, these small business connection events. There's there are going to be a series of events across Minnesota. We'll invite you all there, depending on the theme of the session or the region of the session, um, where it's just it's going to be a room. There's going to be tables. People are going to be invited to come in and just get a business card, hear what hear what you have to offer them. Um, it's a great. Uh, we was very successful in our our pilot phase. Um, and we're going to start rolling this out. And this is going to be system wide. This isn't just going to be small business assistance partnerships. This is going to be anybody who's working with Deed um, on supporting entrepreneurs. And so we think this will, this will be a really great opportunity to connect communities and businesses to our resources. And then you will, you, of course, you're going to be having your own outreach events. Let us know how we can help. We want to signal boost. We want to highlight you. We want to elevate your work and your profile. And so let us know about it. We have. We'll, I'm going to show a link to a calendar that we're hosting. Um, you can upload those events. And then the other thing I wanted to uh, also emphasize is that, um, you know, it's really important. The, the legislature and the governor have really prioritized supporting small business and entrepreneurs in a way that I haven't seen ever. Um, and it's really important to let businesses know that the state prioritizes this and is really in, in making this investment and we care and we're paying attention um, and we're resourcing this. And so really we want to uh, just remind that um, you're required to, but also just, you know, acknowledging deed on printed email and web material. Once again, businesses need ought to know that the state is backing them up and that it, they're supporting this because it is a very lonely journey and oftentimes uh, businesses feel alone. They go, they like, who's, who's out there to help me? Why is the state doesn't care about this? And it's like, we do. And so that's why we're doing all these things to try to make, to connect those businesses to the great partners and resources, um, that we have here. So just be sure to acknowledge, uh, deed, um, on printed email and web material, please, please, please. <laughs> all right. Um, and then, um, on the topic of uh, continuing on the topic of coordination and connection, another thing that we're going to be uh, reviving now that we have a new cohort of uh, partners is our small business partners quarterly meetings. These are for you all and all of our partners across the state who are um, seeking to serve businesses. Um, this is just to share information, bring everybody together. We can share out information. Um, you can share information back out to us and just facilitate that, that improved um, communication among all of small business uh, and innovation teams and partners. Um, so we'll be scheduling that pretty soon. Um, once, you know, we're through the contracting phase. And then the other thing I want to call out to is our startup and small business calendar. This um, grew out of the work of Launch Minnesota and it continues to be a great resource. And we want to extend this resource to you all. Um, and this is where if you have an event and you want to draw some attention to and you want to uh, attract some some uh, some folks to put it on the calendar, let us know. We love sharing how many events uh, are going on. We love signal boosting all that. So so please participate. I invite you to participate in that startup and small business calendar. Um, and Brandon, so quick you, couple questions yeah. regarding the um, acknowledging deed on materials first. Uh, 
from Mike, we have SBDCs that use the MS SBDC logo. You're requesting them to acknowledge and include the DEED logo on their materials as well? Uh, SBDCs may have some specific requirements around that, but if possible, yes. Okay. Uh, because, you know, folks don't necessarily distinguish SBDCs from DEED, even though, you know, it's 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 uh, state network. So um, for the SBDC folks on the call, work, we'll work with Andy on what the appropriate branding strategy there and all that kind of stuff is because uh, I just I'm I'm guessing that SBDCs has specific requirements around that so we just don't want to interfere with that um, but yeah we'll, we'll get yeah. some uh, some good advice out there great and then question from Alex uh, will D provide a guide with logos that should be used and be best practices for those absolutely so great. we have sent around a uh, what we call the quick start guide um, and there is some copy in there and there's some links to uh, logos um, and yeah so that that should all be in there and if you don't have it we'll make sure you do have it and we'll send that around so thank you great so that is all that I really have to cover today about the mechanics of, of the of the granting process and payments and, and monitoring and all that um, and also the, this coordination connection theme. And so I'm going to hand it over to my colleague, Anna, who's going to walk through a demo of what this grant contracting worksheet looks like um, and how to get through it. You're going to be receiving an email later today. We're still making some last minute tweaks um, with the vendor on this, and we'll be handing it over shortly. And uh, Anna is going to be a great resource for you if you have any technical issues with with the platform. If there's any programmatic issues, please send that to us. We will work work, work, work through that in terms of like budgets and program requirements and all that kind of stuff. But any technical issues with the system, um, please reach out to the GMS team and we'll cover that. So Anna, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and then hand it over to you. Thanks, Brandon. I am putting in the email address for um, the grants management system technical assistance. Um, so if you have any questions during this process, um, please reach out to me um, and there's other staff that monitor this email as well for technical assistance. It's gms.deed at statemn.us. You'll also get this information in the user guide um, that will be sent out to you in the email that Brandon referenced um, that will be sent out later today. So what you can expect from me later today is an email. Um, it will have the information about how to go in um, and do the work um, grant contracting worksheet um, that you're being asked to complete as we move through the process and getting closer to the executed contract stage. Um, as Brandon mentioned earlier, that even if you didn't get a reduced award um, for your award that you received, you will still need to go in and then complete this. Um, so it'll be looking at your grant measures, the work plan that you have that you're finalizing, and then the budget categories, as well as any project partners that you're identifying for um, the work that you're going to be doing re regarding this grant. Um, so the email that you'll get from me will come from that gms.deed at state.mnus um, email account today. I will CC Nadia, Brandon, and Julia um, on that email too, so they will get it as well. But if you have any questions, again, regarding anything regarding your grant, please reach out to Nadia and Julia. Their email addresses will be in that email um, so they can help guide you with the specifics regarding your grant. So let me share my screen as I walk through this with you. All right, so when when you get into the grants management system and I wait, ask for you to wait to get in there until you receive that email later today, um, then we'll have the updated form that's ready for you. Um, there is one area that I would like you for um, to check and be aware of. We do need those SWIFT vendor IDs and SWIFT vendor location codes, and I think this is a good time for you to go in and provide those or double check what you had entered in when you registered for your account originally. So when you log into the system, um, you'll land on your dashboard, you'll see the announcements, my task, and then the my opportunities section. Um, but in this upper right hand corner, I'm logged in currently as an organization representative for an organization. You'll see your name listed here. You'll click on that name and then go to the profile. This will take you to your own 
personal profile in the system, but it also take you to the um, profile of the organization in which you're under. Um, a couple of things that I want to point out here is making sure that your organization information is all correct. Um, I would go through and double check that this is up to date. Um, the organization members, I also would like you to check on this, and this is important because the people that are going to be filling out the grant contracting worksheet will need to have the permission level of organization member or the organization representative. Um, so you can look at the members that are attached to your profile and you'll be able to see their role name associated with their their name. Um, you can go in and add um, grant writers, organization members. If you need someone else added as an organization representative, you will need to reach out to me at the gms.deed at statemn.us account. Um, Typically, there's only like one or two organization representatives per organization. Um, there will be details about the different roles in the um, user guide that you'll be receiving the email. Um, typically, the organization representative is someone that can have grant contracting um, signing authority with the state of Minnesota. So that's up to your organization to determine who that person is. Um, but if you need someone additionally added at that role, you'll have to reach out to the gms.deed email account. Um, otherwise, um, you can add people as organization members if you want um, by clicking the little edit button next to their name. And then clicking on this plus sign here. And then you can select the role that you would look, like to add them as. An organization member, it'll give you the current date. Um, you don't have to click the inactive date if you want them to always be active associated with your organization. And then I would select yes for assigned to existing documents. And then once you've selected that, you'd hit save and then it would add that role to that person's profile. So again, the person that um, the role that will need to be filling out these grant contracting worksheets as either organization member or organization representative. Please um, make sure that the members that are working on this in the system have those roles assigned to them already. If you need any assistance for this, please reach out. So under additional organization information, um, this is a great place to check to make sure all this information is up to date as well because it ties to payment things like that for the future in the system, but it also um, has some of the contracting information for that SWIFT ID. So make sure that the DBA is correct. The address for remitting um, anything is correct as well in this section. And then the SWIFT ID is here, and then the SWIFT vendor location ID is here. So those two fields will need to be completed. Um, they do flow into the contract that you'll be receiving and signing. Um, so this is a good time for you to go in and make sure that those are up to date. So when you log in and you're getting ready to fill out the grant contracting worksheet, um, under the My Task section, once you log into your dashboard, you'll see the status of grant contracting revisions required. So that will be the status of the application that you, you had submitted, that has been processed and awarded, um, that you'll be in going into to select the information that you need to fill out for the grant contracting worksheet. Um, you'll be clicking on the name, which is the hyperlink section under name that goes directly into your original application. So you'll be able to see your original application. If you click on the organization name, that will put you back into your organization profile. So you'll want to make sure that you click on this name here. So once you get into this, um, you'll end up on the document landing page, which is just the general landing page for your application. You get to see all the application forms that you filled out as part of your application process, the proposal that you filled out and completed. Um, and then at the bottom here, um, you'll see approved budget. Um, those fields will also be shown to you in the grant contracting worksheet, but this grant contracting worksheet is the form that you're going to be entering in any um, revisions or what you're working towards for your your work plan, um, the grant measures that you'll be submitting for your progress reports, as well as the um, what you want to change your final budget to. So if I click on this section here, it'll bring me into that form. And 
and it takes a little bit longer in the testing environment. So that's why there's a lag in the loading because um, I'm not doing this in the live environment now, but it should not be this slow for you as you're clicking into it. Um, so you'll have some general information again about those Swift IDs if you still need to get one. There's links to the Swift Minnesota supplier portal of where you can re register as a supplier. If you have any questions regarding your Swift ID, I've also provided that link to you under Swift vendor resources. You'll have to re reach out to that Swift team to get information about that. Um, if the UEI number is required um, based on your grant, um, there's information about where to get that information. Um, that's formally called the DUNS number um, that the federal government provided. And then details on how to complete this worksheet can be found in this link here. So if you click on this link, it will bring up the PDF of the, the user guide that I also will be supplying to you in um, the email that you receive from me but it's also right there within the actual form um, if you need it. So um, in the first section here, this is pulling in the information that you put in for your grant measures um, that you put in for your grant measures for the application process. So you'll be able to reference those here if you need to refer back to them. Um, the other thing that I will be attaching in the email that's sent out to you is the download of the application that you submitted. So you be, can easily work off of that as well um, and make adjustments as needed. But I just wanted to point out that the grant measures that you see at the very top are the ones that you submitted in your application. So the sections that you'll be filling out are um, numbered. Section one is the grant performance measures by grant period. Um, the reason why we have some of these as quarters is that some of our grant programs break them out by quarters. That is not required as part of um, the, the contracting process for the Small Business Assistance Partnership. So you will be entering in that project activity if it's still the same thing that you have for, submitted for your um, your application, you can certainly copy and paste. Um, Brandon did outline the ones that are required for your your um, project for your grant, so please reference those in the slides that he provided in the PowerPoint today. Um, and then a description of the project activity, and then any expected measurable outcome for the total of the grant period. These are the three fields that will be required for you to complete per grant measure performance measure for your um, project. Um, this plus symbol on the right hand side will then populate an additional one. So as you need to add for each project activity for your grant performance measure, you will need to hit that plus symbol. If you perhaps need to delete one, you can hit the minus sign. And it's going to ask you to confirm that you do want to delete this and you confirm and then it will delete that that tile for you. Um, but as I mentioned, you will need to add a tile for each grant performance measure and that the project activity description of the project activity and the expectable, expected measurable outcome for the total grant period is also required for this. The other fields, um, you can fill out the project activity start date and end date if you'd like, but these fields are not required and you do not need to complete any of the quarterly breakout for these. So as you go down to the next section, you will see the total amount that you've been awarded for this grant for the entire grant period. And then it will also provide you the breakout for your total revised budget for year one, and then also the total revised budget for year two. Um, so what we're asking you to do is complete the first column for the total revised budget for year one and the total revised budget for year two. Um, you can ignore the quarterly breakout. Some programs use that, this one does not. So as you're totaling up all the information um, in your grant, um, it will be adding this total amount at the very bottom. So just be aware that as I walk through this really quickly, that you'll want to make sure that what you enter into this total amount matches up here. But it will do the calculations for you, but just be aware that you want to make sure that these two, these two amounts match. And then after you finish out the budget year for year one, 
you'll want to complete the budget for year two. As you scroll down, this is where you could have the opportunity to finalize those project partners, what if they're going to be compensated or not, and then what the anticipated board amount that they will be compensated with um, is. So similarly to up above, as you need to add project partners, you'll be using this plus sign. So if you have multiple project partners for your pro um, program for the grant, you will be adding additional tiles as needed and then you can delete them as needed as well. If there's any attachments, I don't believe that we're requiring any attachments for this program, you can add those at the bottom. But otherwise, um, once you're done, I highly recommend um, saving um, as you go and complete this. You can return back to this contracting worksheet as you're working on it, um, but I do recommend saving this um, as you're working on it periodically just so you don't lose any of the work that you are working on. Um, but once you're finalized, um, you can just hit save. It will be saved in the system. We have some stuff that we need to do on the program side to then complete this form, but the work that you've um, completed can just be saved and then that will be finalized by the program staff. Um, so the, a reminder, you will be getting the email from me later today with the information regarding how to complete this, um, and along with the contact information for Nadia and Julia. Um, so if you need to reach out with them, to them for any questions um, for the grant itself, you can do that as well. Um, but as I mentioned, I'm here for technical assistance. So if you have any questions as you're working through this or something um, doesn't theme right either, um, please reach out. We respond in a timely fashion. We usually get back within the hour um, during business hours. So happy to assist you as you're working through this. And I appreciate your patience as we're working through using this new grants management system. I know that you all applied through it and hopefully that went well for you. Um, but any feedback too that you have about it um, is, is great too. We'll accept feedback. Um, we hope that this is a positive experience for you to use the new system. Yeah, thanks, Anna. That's great. And um, we have recorded that that video, so we will send that around. I'll see you also if I can just break out that specific section for the video so so people can have that handy too as as they're walking through that. Um, and yeah, I just want to applaud like. Like applaud you all for for participating with us and being one of the first cohorts through this system. We're really excited about this system. We're really excited about its capabilities and we think it's really going to streamline a lot of things. Uh, I was just getting a preview of the of the payment request process and like, oh man, it's going to be so much better, um, I think. And I think you all appreciate it if, if you participate in state grants before. Um, and so, um, yeah, just a couple clarification questions. We have a few minutes for questions. So um, one of the clarifications, so yeah, year one will be, you can essentially plan on January 2024 through June 30, um, 2024. And then year two will be that extended year um, from July 1 to all the way through that October um, October 30, 2024 uh, date. Um, is there a deadline to complete the grant worksheet? Um, please complete that by the end of next week if you can. If if you still need some work to do, we'll work with you. There's nothing goes away if you don't get that in by end of next week. But just be mindful that we need this information to keep the process moving forward so we can get your contract um, finalized, routed, approved, all the things that need to happen internally um, so that then you can get an executable contract, get that executed and get started. So um, drive for that December 15th um, deadline. And if you need some help um, on the, if you have program questions, please reach out to my team and Nadia. Um, if you have technical questions, reach out to the GMS inbox, and we'll we will um, we'll help you get through that. Um, and Brandon, we do have another question that's a little higher up. Um, mm -hmm. Sarah okay. asks if if a project partner is compensated, but that compensation is matching funds and not deed funds, uh, can uh, it be reported as zero dollars but compensated? I am shooting a little off the hip here, but what we care about is, are they getting compensated with our the state funds um, mm -hmm. for this? And so I don't want to confuse the system by saying they're compensated, but then it's zero. So if there's an opportunity to describe 
in in the more narrative section of the nature of that partnership, put that subtle detail in there. But unless they're getting funding from uh, us through through state funds through this project, then leave it as zero and say it's uh, they're not compensated. Anna, do you have any insights there? Maybe from other programs. Wanna... Yeah, I just want to note that there is a way a, a field in there for you to describe that partnership. So definitely put that description that Brandon's describing there um, if you need to kind of flesh that out. And the program staff will be reviewing these. So if they have any questions regarding what you submitted, um, they can reach out to you and just get more clarification. And they will be finalizing the versions that you're doing in the revised um, grant contracting worksheet um, on, on their end. So um, they might make, be making some tweaks of things that you submit anyway. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, do you have a few oh, more questions me. too? Uh, um, if we yeah, help me them. help me get through that, Nadia. Which uh, yeah, questions sure. are we looking for? Uh, yep. So uh, Justin asks, uh, is a 50-50 split required for the fiscal year since there's only six months for the first year? Yeah. So just to reemphasize, no more than 50% of your award is available in that first year, right? So you may take a look at uh, your budget revisions and go, well, we're only going to use, let's say you know, 40% of our funding in that first fiscal year and then set, reserve 10% for that seven, second fiscal year. We can do that, that's fine, but we just cannot go over that 50%. There's only 50% um, of the funds are available in that first year. Yeah. Um, it's a short, obviously it's an abbreviated year, six months. So we, we don't think that that would be a problem, um, but, you know, let us know, just make sure you don't over go over that number. Um, because there literally won't be the money in the bank account to to cover that. Yeah, so. and Justin has his hand raised. Justin, did you want to say more about that? Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah, thanks, Brandon and Nadia. Um, just to quick clarify on that, because what uh, Anna was showing us was that the breakdown in the GMS system is a 50-50, um, and I'm just wondering if we have to match that or if we could put in less than that 50-50, and if you could maybe need to speak to more of that too. Yeah, Anna, I'm not sure yeah, if this I can. system can do that or, yeah. Yeah, so what we can do is we will put it in initially as the 50-50. Um, I know I said to make sure that it's aligned, um, but we can modify those once we received your revised um, contract revisions for the grant contracting worksheet. So um, I will... I will train the program staff on how to make that adjustment if needed. But what you will see initially is that 50-50 split. Please reach out to the program staff if you need it to be something different so that they can um, verify that with you and make sure that it aligns with what they're thinking for payments um, if, since the, the contracting period is a little different for the second year. Um, so we can make those adjustments as needed, but you will see that 50-50 split. So if you are truly thinking that you're going to be spending a little bit more um, in the second year due to the the difference in the time that you're allotted, um, please please just enter in what you think you want to have, and then the, the program staff will work with you and making sure Great. that's adjusted then. Excellent. Thank you, Anna. And we just have one more question, if we have a moment, and that's just, with execution delayed for an 18 month period instead of a 24 month period, can uh, we can extend reimbursements until October 15th, 2025, and that won't affect a future application? Um, yeah, so exactly, that won't affect a, a future application. So we're trying to align our, um, our funding in, with the reality that we don't get out funding July 1 of, of a new biennium. And so that's why we, in the initial conception of this program, we wanted to just automatically extend that out into October with the anticipation that the next biennium of funding we'd be able to award by October. So there, there's no gap. We're trying to reduce that gap in funding. Um, and so, yeah, um, you your pro, your programs will already automatically be extended, so to speak, to October uh, 2025. Even then, after that, you will have an opportunity to extend later down the line. We're not going to do that op automatically. We'll do it on a pr project by project basis as needed. Um, um, extensions are, are fairly routine. 
um, but we want to handle those on a case a case by case basis rather than automatically extending. So you typically we will monitor in that second year. We'll touch base for about six to eight months within that second year and we'll say, how the, how's the program looking? Do you think you need an extension? Um, and typically we'll do, you know, one to two to three month extension on a fairly routine basis. Um, and we can have a conversation at that time. But at this point, assume that your project is going to be deliver all the outcomes and all the activities by that October 2025 timeline. Thank you. And uh, I just want to acknowledge that we're at time. Um, I'm not going to stop the recording. Um, if people have any last minute questions, we can wrap. Uh, we'll take uh, maybe one or two more questions. And then once again, we're going to be here throughout the entire journey. Um, and so if you have questions, um, please reach out to the team. We are uh, we have to wait for this uh, recording to download and then we'll send up a follow up email. You're also going to get a separate email from Anna uh, giving you access to the grant contracting worksheet. And then once again, we'll send you another email with some additional resources and reminders um, related to the program itself. Um, so, yeah, thanks. I, we are so incredibly grateful for you all stepping up and willing to take on this great work uh, on behalf of all these uh, Minnesota's small businesses. Um, we're going to be delivering some great impact, some great services. We look forward to the great stories that we're going to be able to share, the great performance metrics we're going to be able to share, and all the work that we have ahead of us. Um, we're very, very excited um, about all this, and we appreciate all your work and attention on this. Um, so, yeah, with that, any other last minute questions? And otherwise, I'll wrap. Not seeing any hands. Okay, great. Thanks a lot. Appreciate uh, Anna. Appreciate you, and appreciate uh, the demo. I think that's really great, um, and I'm super excited. And yeah, we will all be talking soon a lot um, over the next 18 plus months. So, all right. Take care, everybody. Thanks a lot. Thank you, everyone.